Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick to the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 10. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, first start with 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 10. Now, because I have 2 3 to the power of x is on my left-hand side, I'm simply going to factor out 3 to the power of x from my left-hand side. So now I have 3 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 is equal to 10. Now 1 plus 1, that's equal to 2. So now I have 3 to the power of x times 2 is equal to 10. Now if I divide both sides by 2, these two cancel out. Now I'm left with 3 to the power of x is equal to 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So now I'm given I just got another equation, 3 to the power of x equals 5. So now to solve this, I'm going to first take the log on both sides. So now I have log 3 to the power of x is equal to log 5. Now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this would equal b times log a. And what's so important about this property is that right now, as you see, x here, this is an exponent. And it's really hard to solve for x right now the way it is because x is actually going to be a decimal because we know that 3 to the power of 1 is equal to 3, and 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 9. And 5, this is somewhere in between 3 and 9, meaning x is somewhere in between 1 and 2. However, we can't find that exact value the way it is right now. So now that if we move x to the front, now x will be a real term, and it's going to be much easier to solve for it. So I have log 3 to the power of x is equal to log 5, and now if I move x to the front, I get x times log 3 is equal to log 5. And now if I divide both sides by log 3, these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to 0 0.699 over 0 0.477, which is equal to 1.464. So this is my answer. All right, so I have 8 to the power of 16 plus 8 to the power of 16. So for my solution, eight here, this is the same thing as two to the power of three. So now if I go ahead and substitute in 2 to the power of 3 for 8, I get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 16 plus 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 16. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So these two simply just multiply. So in this case, I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 16. So we can think of a as 2, m as 3, and n as 16. So this would be equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 times 16. And 3 times 16 is equal to 48. So now I have, sorry, 2 to the power of 48. 
So now I have 2 to the power of 48 plus 2 to the power of 48. So now from here, if I factor out 2 to the power of 48, I get 2 to the power of 48 times 1 plus 1 because 2 to the power of 48 divided by 2 to the power of 48 is 1. Now 1 plus 1, this is, that's equal to 2. So now I have 2 to the power of 48 times 2. Now 2 here, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 1. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 2 to the power of 48 times 2 to the power of 1, this is equal to 2 to the power of 48 plus 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 49. So this is my answer. All right, so I have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, first start with 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now the first thing I'm going to do is, for my left hand side, I'm going to factor out 3 to the power of x. So now I have 3 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. Now if I simplify what's in the parentheses, I get 3 to the power of x times 3 is equal to 1. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So we can think of 3 as 3 to the power of 1. So 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 1. And that's going to equal 3 to the power of x plus 1, which is equal to 1. So now, anything to the power of 0 is actually equal to 1. And because we want these two to be the same bases, I'm going to change 1 to 3 to the power of 0. So now I have 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 3 to the power of 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x plus 1, this is equal to 0. So now to solve this, all I have to do is subtract 1 on both sides. These two cancel out. Now I'm left with x is equal to 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. So now to check, I have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. So now if x equals negative 1, I have 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 3 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of negative n, this is the same thing as 1 over a to the power of n. So 3 to the power of negative 1, that's going to equal 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3, which is equal to 1. Now 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3, that's equal to 3 over 3, which is equal to 1. 3 over 3 divided by, or sorry, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I have 1 over 1, or sorry, 1 equals 1, which is right. So my solution is right.